Hello everybody, we have just finished this 1984 Land Rover Series 3. Now 1984 was the last year that they made the Series 3s, so even one year after this is when it becomes a Defender shape and the car became the Land Rover 90. But this one is now fully electric. Um, now the story of this vehicle when it came to us was the starter motor didn't work in the two and a quarter litre petrol engine that was in it. Um, and because the starter motor didn't work, that was sort of the final straw for the client. And they said, you know what, enough's enough. I'm fed up of replacing things. I'm fed up of servicing it, putting new oil in it, overheating, all that kind of stuff. So they bought it over and electrified it. Now, this car is a genuine farm vehicle. Most of the cars we build go to London and never go off road ever. But this one is seriously going to be used for transporting hay bales around, uh, moving sheep around the farm, off road pretty much all the time. So we've made sure that it's completely watertight so that in the winter it's fine. It's going to be absolutely great through the mud. Um, obviously loads of torque, loads of power. So off-road, these vehicles are much better than they originally were. This one's got 120 horsepower worth of net gain Hyper 9 motor in it, coupled to five Tesla Model S batteries. Um, now this is about twice the original horsepower that this car had before. And the range is circa 80 miles. Obviously when they're towing a trailer and have got a lot of weight in it, it's going to be less than that. If they were going very slowly around the little towns or the little villages near them, then it'd be a little bit more than that. But that's, that's, the, uh, that's the guideline we look at. So around here, you'll notice the only part of the car that you can actually tell it's electric is where the charge socket is. So this is a type two charge socket, sits where the original fuel filler was there, and the client will be able to charge it up with a regular three pin socket so just in the side of their garage or, or wherever that you could have it in an extension lead through through the window of your house if you liked um, but this car will also charge up on a regular type 2 charging station such as the ones you find at Tesco or supermarkets or you may even have one installed in your house with a proper wall mounted charge socket you charge her up in four hours um, but with this three pin socket it's more like an over overnight charge um, so all they need to do is every time they get home plug that in and off they go um, now interestingly this car will only ever charge up on solar energy um, at the farm where it's going to live um, so that's really interesting that the you know all the motoring that will be done in this car all the transportation of the farm stuff um, is all done with solar panels um, you know clean environmentally friendly energy um, and this was actually the last part of going off grid for this client so the client grows their own vegetables um, they generate all their own power with the solar the only thing that they were using was petrol and now they don't use petrol anymore so they are completely off grid completely eco-friendly and that was really the main aim of this project um, so other than that we've put a nice little i'm electric badge on it now, because of where this client lives, um, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a very green town. Um, it's very sort of young and cool. People let the tires down in old stinky Land Rovers like this. So we want it to be very clear that this is electric. Also helps with our marketing, so that's good. Um, but around the back, much the same. Obviously, we're missing the um, exhaust pipe. That's about it. Still got a, the proper tow ball on there. Trailer electrics are all the same um, because obviously it's going to be a towing vehicle. On all of our builds, we leave the same 12 volt, um, 12 volt power system. So all the lights, reverse lights, indicators, etc., all stay the same. Um, and if we keep recurring round, we can have a look in the interior of the car. So it's actually a very original interior in here. You can see like the door cards on a Land Rover series is actually a very rare thing. Like you hardly ever see them, but they're not ripped. Um, so they're muddy and horrible, but they're still in there. Um, as is the whole original interior. All we've done in there is add a little gear selector, so drive, neutral, reverse for the motor controller, and a state of charge meter. So have you got 100% of charge? Have you got 50% of charge? Do you need to go home because you've got 10% of charge? Um, so let's have a look under the bonnet. So this is where it really is a bit different. So under here, Things are obviously completely different. Now, we tend to opt for a Perspex cover on our builds because people like to see what's actually going on in there. So 
There's obviously a hell of a lot of electronics. It's actually quite impressive when you look at all these big fat orange cables um, and all the, all the control and the monitoring systems here. Um, so very quickly, this is a DC-DC converter. Now what that does is take 120 volts, which is in the battery pack down there, and charge up the original 12 volt battery pack. So the 12 volt battery for lights, indicators, windscreen wipers, etc., charged up by the high voltage. So think of it as a fancy alternator. Next along here, battery management. Now battery management talks to the battery pack the whole time, checking things such as voltages, temperatures, current going through the pack, etc., etc., and just feeds all that information back to the motor controller and other parts of the car like the charger just to make sure you're not charging too quickly you're not discharging too quickly or the temperatures are getting all too hot especially in this hot weather um, moving on to the motor controller or inverter as some people call it now what that's doing is it's taking dc voltage out of the battery pack and it's switching it into ac um, three phase there which is controlling the motor so for example when you put your foot on the throttle that black box is saying send more power to the motor or send less. That also works with regenerative braking, which is standard in all of our vehicles. So when you come off the throttle, you'll really feel the car starts to really slow you down. And it's actually putting a lot of power back into the battery pack, give you better efficiency, better range. Okay. So other than that, in here is the contact to circuit. So that's pre-charge and things like that, which is when you turn the key, allowing power to go to all the systems, etc. But um, really, we like to keep it in this nice watertight box, um, and that's all safe in there. We do use water cooling on our builds. Now, as you can see, this is that little header tank we've got here. We've got a radiator in the front there somewhere. It's a tiny little thing. Um, and that water system connected to a 12-volt water pump sends coolant through the inverter and then through the entire battery pack as well. Now, this isn't really to cool. It's more to keep everything at equilibrium. We are cooling the inverter a bit, sort of keeping it at 35, 40 degrees. The batteries want to be at something similar because that's the most efficient temperature for their discharge. Um, the main reason for this is if one battery was at 50 degrees and one battery was at 30 degrees, they would discharge at different speeds. When they discharge at different speeds, there will be all kinds of problems with state of charge, etc. So we equalize it all with running coolant through it. Um, so that turns on as soon as you, you turn the ignition on. Okay. Now, this car didn't have power steering as standard, so it still doesn't have power steering, but the battery pack plus motor in this car is only about 180, 190 kilos. So it's much lighter than the massive um, petrol engine that was in here originally. So it's a bit lighter on the steering, less weight up the front. Okay. Um, but other than that, you see, you know, we leave the rusty old bits, we leave the character of this vehicle like this is falling apart and, you know, it's got all this sound deadening stuff because we don't want to completely rebuild a, vid um, a car like this and completely make it brand new and spanking new because that's not the character. The, the owners of this car love it, love her for who she is. You know, she's a bit dented and she's a bit ratty tatty, but that's because she works on a farm. This is a genuine working vehicle, right? Um, so... That's the fun bit under there. The last bit I want to show you is the motor. Um, so you may be able to see it just under here. There's a little electric motor down there and that is connected to the original gearbox in the engine. So it's about this big by this big and it's um, 120 horsepower on the original gearbox. Now, because it's on the original gearbox, it's still using the original gears in the car. So there's loads of torque, which means you don't need first and second gear to sort of get off the line. When we drive these around, we put it in third gear, leave it there and start from the traffic lights, but also go up to 60, 70 mile an hour, however fast you like, um, and leave it there. If you were really going to be sitting on a motorway or an A road for a long time at sort of 60 mile an hour, press the clutch, turn it into fourth and off you go again. Um, but similarly with the high-low ratio, with the four-wheel drive system, with the diff locks, you can still use all that stuff. So if you were really going off-road um, and you needed, I don't know, a different gear ratio or something like that, you can still engage all that. You can still engage the diff locks. All that works in the same way, although you don't really need it so much because the motor is so torquey and so powerful from zero RPM that you can pretty much go up anything anyway. So um, I've just walked you around the car. Um, now we've just delivered this car to the South Downs show where we're, we're displaying the vehicle along with one of our other defenders. 
Um, so I thought I'd show you how to use it. So you stick it in third gear. You don't bother with the clutch, although it's still there. It goes into drive on the gear selector. And then all you do is almost like a golf buggy or a normal electric car, put your foot on the throttle and off we go. So we're pulling away in third gear. Obviously in a normal car, you'd never be able to do that because the torque you know, wouldn't let you. But because this electric motor has got so much torque, so much power, we just pull away in third, no problem. And uh, off we go. So we thought we'd just give her a little bit of a razz around in these fields here, so you can get a feel of how she flies along. Woo! Loads of power around here. Um, you can see it's quite exciting to drive off-road. Ha ha ha!